this demonstration, say I've got a lot of water bottles here, and if you if you will allow me, uh, each each one of these water bottles is going to represent a hundred thousand acre feet. Okay, we we, we deal with hundred thousand acre feet, and and we don't we a lot of times people ask, well, how many gallons? So so there's how many gallons is in a hundred thousand acre feet. It's thirty two billion five hundred eighty five million one hundred thousand gallons. So it's a lot of water and the numbers, you know, just get bigger and bigger when you talk about the, the yearly uh, operations of, of Toledo Van Rose Mall. So for, for today's demonstration, and there you saw the, the 172 would be represented by, by 45 bottles inside of our, our bucket. Alan, correct me, do we have 38 bottles in the bucket right now? <laughs> 39. 39. So we're, we're going to start, uh, and the reason we want to start at uh, 168 and a half, our new contract calls for us to, that we, we, get, we have the uh, ability, if we have the water to generate, we, we get those premium hours. Well, we catch it the very first weekday of the, of the first weekday of January. So if we're, if we're sitting at 168, we can't catch those hours. So we try to be above 168 and a half. So, so in, in, in January, uh, we typically have six bottles, 600,000 acre feet, tip, on a typical average of January. That's what comes in to Toledo Bend Reservoir. So uh, we have 30, 39 bottles in, in, this, in this bucket right now, and we're at 168 and a half. And also in January, we, by the end of January, we want to be at a, a 169. So we're going to take five bottles and we're going to they're going to pass through the reservoir but they're going to go downstream so five bottles of those are going to go downstream and one, <laughs> one bottle we're trying to get up to the 169 it takes a, approximately 100,000 acre feet to get to that 169 right. so then we, we get and, and that brings us to the 169 we go into february again we have six bottles of, of water coming in we're gonna we're gonna take pass these these bottles. There's two, four, five of those bottles are gonna pass through, and we're gonna we're gonna generate that hopefully, and we're gonna leave one in the bucket, one in the uh, toy demand to raise the level to 169 and a half. So so this this release we have minimum releases that are going downstream uh, uh, every day. And then, but we try to release all of that, all that we can through generation. But I will tell you also that when we get, if we're above the 172 and a half, we're spilling water. So we're releasing that through spills. And I'll, I'll talk a little more about it at the end. So we, which brings us to the, uh, are we to, to March? We're at 169. And, and March is a big inflow year. We have, have seven bottles. So we're, we're going to take six of those bottles. And we're going to put those in, in, in the river going downstream. And we're going to put one bottle in Toledo Bend. So now, now we've reached a level of one, 170. So we're, we're to March. In March, we typically have, April. A, excuse me, April, we have five bottles of water coming in. And we're at 170. In April, the first two weeks of the, the uh, month in April, we could try to go to a 171. And by the end of April, we try to get to a 172. So this time, we're, we're going to only put one bottle and pass it through. We're going to generate one bottle, and now we're going to raise the lake up to approximately 172. So, so we should have our 44 bottles of, of water in the reservoir right now. We're at 172. Well, well here comes May. Well, we've still got water coming in May. And typically May is when we, we, from May through October, we're going to try to take the reservoir from 172 back down to 168 uh, by the 1st of October. So to, to do that, all this water that comes in in May, we've got to, it's coming in and generating the whole time, try, trying to take that water and generate all five bottles. In addition to that, May, to get away from the 172, we're going to, we're going to generate another bottle to try to get this down just stay a little bit below the 172. The closer we are to 172 at this time time of the year uh, and this all of this is in uh, cooperation with our guide we're following our guide that lay out all these levels. Um, so 
to you know to avoid spilling, we, we try to start easing that that water down. So then gets us to uh, to June. In June we have three bottles come in, We're, and, and when, when I y'all when I say it comes in, we don't know if it's going to come in the first day or if it's going to come in the last day of the month. That, that's all part of what this man's job and his counterpart from the Texas side do every day. They try to decide how. What, what do the inflows look like? Do, do we need to generate? Do we not need to generate? Well, certainly when it's, when it's raining all cats and dogs out there, they're, they're generating with both units just like we are today to try to get the, the reservoir down. So all three of these go, go through, the, through the reservoir and, and hopefully through power generation. Hopefully we can generate that water. All right, and, and then we're still going down, so we're gonna get to approximately a, a little above 171. In, in starting in uh, July. So, and, and the whole deal, y'all all know that you, if you live on like July 4th, it's probably one of the biggest holidays we have. So we, we, we try to have that water level, to keep it up high for that. And then after the 4th is when it starts dwindling down. By the end of August, most people are back in school and it, and it slows down. So, so in, in July, we have one bottle that's gonna come through and be generated. We're going to take two bottles out, which gets us to August, and now we're back to approximately a 170. Now, yeah, correct. You say that there's no bottles in August, so there is no inflow. So and that's rounding down. There is a little bit of water, right. but it's less than 100,000 for this example. Right. We just round it right. So, so in our whole demonstration, if it was less than 50,000, we didn't put a bottle in. I would tell you that August and uh, September are still, they're less than 100,000, but maybe just a hair more than 50,000. So we're gonna take two, two of the bottles out and put them in the river going down, downstream. September, we're gonna have pretty much the same setup. It, 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 didn't, it was not 50,000 acre feet, so we, we, we're gonna take one bottle, two bottles out, excuse me, out, which bring, brings us back down to 168 at the end, end at the, the end of September. October, we're, we're back to a little, little inflow, so you, you, we've got one bottle that, that's coming in in October, so it, it's going to go in the reservoir. We've got plenty of room, but we try to hold the, the reservoir down. Part of this holding this down, and I see Sean and Kenny is in the background, but while I'm fishing, we're back there while I'm fishing. They would like the, the, a certain amount of ground exposed for a certain amount of time each year, and that helps with the, the fisheries aspect. So that that one bottle will, will come in and, and we, we I mean and we'll, we'll take it out. Did we take two more bottles? No. no. All right. November we have we have two bo two bottles coming in. Again, we're going to try to hold the lake at 168. So hopefully we generated them out or they or they went through minimum releases out. And that brings us to December. And in December we have four bottles coming in. But I, I mentioned to you, so we're going to generate three of those bottles. It's come in, so it goes out, and then we're going to, we want to raise that level back up to 169.5, I mean 168.5, which allows us to, to hopefully catch our first day of generation uh, of, of the first weekday of January of the next year. So, and, and relative to our contract, our, we have an 11-year contract right now. Uh, because a lot of people think that it's mandatory. Certainly we want to generate as, as much as we can generate. We don't have to generate anything. We don't have to. But if, if we can generate for those hours that they contract us with, they'll pay us a premium for those, those 80,000 megawatt hours that were spread out. Actually, we have two months, October and November, we don't schedule any because that's typically, if we're, if we're trying to hold it at 168, we're, we don't know that we're going to have water to generate, so we didn't schedule that. So this last 11-year contract was designed with our history. They took our history and put that into their mix and said, well, look, this is when you can best uh, uh, deliver us the power. So, uh, And we don't want, want to call for too much that's going to put you in a bind. So, But we don't have it. The way the contract works, if, if we deliver that power to them, uh, if it's the primary hours, we get $60.48 for those hours that are contracted for. If we can't, they will go buy that power. And I would tell you right now, the probably the average price is somewhere in the low 30s maybe, maybe high 20s. They will buy that power and they would give us, they'll, they'll 
give us the difference. If, if they have to buy power and it's above the 60s, uh, a week ago we had some in the $140 range. If we, had, if we couldn't deliver that power and they had to buy it, we would pay the difference going up. So, um, so we'll, we'll go back. I'm sorry. All right, so, so you see that the total release is this 40, which represents about 4 million acre feet of water. In, in this bucket, uh, with our 39 bottles at 169.5, uh, we're, we're just under under four million. Pardon? 168. One, excuse me, 168.5. So, out of this, out of these 40 bottles that went downstream, I'd mentioned to you about we tried to it, most of it. We hope most of it was went through the generator so that we could make some money off of it. Uh, but we also have minimum releases. I was talking with some gentlemen earlier, and I said that for the first 50 year contract that. That release was one bottle per year. It was approximately 100,000 acre feet that year. In our new license, the new 50 year license that we just received, uh, it calls for 160,000. So we're releasing in the past, whatever it was, eight, eight years or seven years, however long we've been in it, we, we release 160,000 acre feet. That's, that's guaranteed by FERC. That's no, there's no holding back on it. That's, that's what goes downstream. So that, that is the water that keeps a more stable river. So those, those of you that come from Lake Charles, Sulphur, or whatever uh, area, and the Orange area, SRE Texas and SRE Te uh, uh, Louisiana operate diversion canals. That, some of that helps feed those diversion canals. We, we both sell approximately 60,000 acre feet on each side down there. I, I would tell you since we went into this new release pattern, we have not had to supplement. Of course, we've had a lot of wet years too. I'm not going to be. I'm going to be honest that you know we've had a lot of wet years and we've generated a lot. Uh, but but past years we have had to maybe generate for an hour or two every three or four days to make sure that the river had water that the both pump stations could deliver to those industries down there. So that, that you know Toledo Bend makes both of our diversion canals a reliable water source. We're not going to run out of water to support those industries. So, uh, but we have increased it already by over 50% from what we were the first first 50 years. <clears throat> so, and out of this these total releases, you have 40. Our average generation is about 33 of these bottles. It's about 3.3 million. That would be our average generation. Six of these bottles would be an average release. Okay, so now we're up to 39 bottles. I just told you 1.6 uh, is the other two bottles that are our minimum releases. Now again, this is, so this is an operational deal and, and certainly these guys try to do everything they can to do to operate this and not spill any water, but certainly have. We spilled water this year, very small spill, but we've had a large amount. We've already had over 4 million acre feet come into Toledo Bend this year and we're at the middle of, of June. So, so the value of water. Uh, I know Mr. Morton wants to talk about the value of water uh, in just a little while. So e each one of these bottles, if it, if it, last year when they went through the generator, it made, made approximately 225,000. And we split that with Texas. All right. If, if we were to take this bottle and, and sell it, it would, it would bring in about 7.2 million. So, so that's, that's the difference that we're talking about when we look at our operations uh, and, and why the River Authority and past boards that would have ever directed the, whoever was in my place right here to look at, you ought to be looking at water sales towards your future. Uh, you know, so it just so happened on my watch that the, the, the group came in and started to talk to me, and this was dur during COVID. And, uh, you know, we've been working for over, over three years of trying to uh, put together a, a contract and nobody can sign anything because y'all are all, I'm sure y'all are all aware of how, what this has to go through in Louisiana. It, it starts right here with this board, but it goes to every parish, every parish police jury would have to approve what we're talking about doing. The Senate Committee on National Resources would have to approve it. The House Committee on National Resources 
The Louisiana Water Commission would have to approve it, and ultimately the governor would have to approve a, a, a sale out of state. If we were doing this to somebody in Natchitoches or Alexander, we wouldn't have had this meeting. We would have we could have initiated the sale and done whatever. But um, but so so what what the plan was, and I've heard some people ask me earlier what the plan was was to try to get it to something that the folks that are willing to start paying reservation fees could could agree to, and hopefully the board would agree to, and then start this this process to, to go through. This board has agreed, this is a new board, they've agreed to nothing. So I would tell you that if, if they decide to move forward and tell me, Warren, you keep working on it or whatever, they would have to determine what what amounts, what the rates would be, certainly they're gonna determine what the rates be. And then all, after all of that, this group would have to either accept it or not accept it. If they said, yeah, we, we still like all that, we'll move forward, then you go into that next, next process to, to see if the rest of the state would agree and allow this sale to go through. <laughs>